Hey everybody, my name is Tyson Moore from Tyson Moore Builds, and I'm going to show you how I built this hinged clamp rack for all of my Bessie clamps. They hold together in one easy location, and this is a fun project to build. First, I started with a standard 5 and 1 half inch white oak board, and I marked my first mark at 18 inches long. I cross cut the board into various lengths, and I had three at 18 inches, one at 22, one at 14, and one at 6 inches. Now as I mentioned, I just cut those dimensions to the ones that you see on the screen, but I will say that I should have cut them 1 to 2 inches shorter, and it would have allowed the Bessie 12 inch clamps to reach all the way to the bottom of my second shelf. As you see here, they didn't quite make it. So if you do have a lot of 12 inch clamps, perhaps reduce the lengths to something more like these, just be sure to keep the ratios the same. Now keeping in mind the full curve of my table saw blade, I carefully measured and adjusted my fence to right at 2 and 3 quarters inches and made sure that each board would be ripped exactly in half. And this left me with six pieces at 18 inches long, two at 22, two at 14, and two at six. Next, I took the distance between where the vertical support pieces would be, and I divided them into 10 marks every inch and a half. I clamped all the 18 inch long boards together and made sure my piece with the pencil marks were at the front. At this point, I changed out my table saw blade for my dado stack and used the inner and outer eighth inch chippers with a 1 16th inch chipper in between. I used a piece of scrap to determine that I wanted my dados to be cut at one and three quarters inches deep to hold the clamps. So I raised my dado stack to that height, adjusted my fence to the first pencil mark, and cut my first dado. Definitely check the thickness of the bars on your clamps to determine how wide your dados need to be, since all clamp bars are not the same width. But after making sure the clamps are going to fit, I moved on to centering my dado cut on every pencil mark and cut ten equally spaced dados. Also, add a sacrificial scrap piece of wood as your last piece, as it will help a lot with tear out. I then measured and marked two spots on the ends of each 18 inch dado board. I threw my countersink bit into my drill and prepared to drill all of my holes. Now I decided to attach my unit with screws, primarily because I wanted to try plugging the screw holes as you will later see. But you can attach these however you want. You can use box joints or cut yourself a nice set of dovetails. It is important to remember to drill all the holes on opposite sides of each set so that the dado grooves stay in their original alignment. Once this is done, it was a simple process of attaching everything together with a bit of glue and screws. Next, I grabbed a piece of scrap walnut and made a quick jig to help keep the bit aligned. I'm using a straight wood plug cutter and plan to use the jig to cut two plugs right next to each other and then shift it down to cut more. I was in need of 24 plugs. And if you have a drill press then this would be even easier, as you won't need a jig to help keep the bit from skipping around. But as you'll see here, a simple jig works just fine. Next, I used a little nail set to break the plugs loose. In hindsight, I definitely drilled these plugs deeper than I needed, and I could have gotten away with a shallower plug, but as you'll see, they'll all be flush cut anyways. I then filled up one of my holes with glue and dipped and inserted plugs into all the holes. Having a mallet or something to knock them in is definitely helpful, and if you don't have a mallet, I can help you out with that. Now after the glue dried, I flush cut all of the plugs. I discovered my multi-tool was way faster at cutting these off than my flush cut saw was, but it might have been just that I'm really bad at using my hand saw. Anyways, I cut all of them flush and then sanded them down and then gave everything a quick round over to give it a softer look and add just a tiny bit of extra detail. I then ripped another 18 inch piece of oak at 45 degrees in order to make the French cleat that I was going to use to hang the unit on the wall. I then put my dado stack back in the table saw and cut a little section on each vertical rail where the French cleat would sit. I then measured this to where the piece would sit flush with the half lap joint and used my jigsaw to cut away a piece of the angle. I then popped it into place to make sure everything was going to fit and went back to my table saw and used my dado stack to create that half lap joint on each of the edges. After this, I simply glued and screwed the back piece in for a nice flush fit. 
and once the unit is on the wall, it will fit together just like this. Next up was drilling a couple of holes in each rail and inserting quarter inch dowels to provide a little extra support and alignment to the entire unit. I then moved on to finishing the oak with some teak oil that I had in the shop. You can paint yours instead if you prefer, but I went with this teak oil because I wanted to bring out the grain and emphasize the walnut plugs. Now once everything dried, I cut and installed a continuous hinge on the side of each section. I cut mine with a metal jigsaw blade, but you could use a simple hacksaw. The final step was simply to find a stud and attach the other 45 degree oak piece to the wall. Once this was attached, it was a simple lift and hang. This is why I love the French cleat. And because I recessed mine into the unit, the vertical rails sit flush with the wall. Each section hinges out and works just as I hoped it would. The only thing left was to fill it up with clamps. And that's it. The hinge clamp rack is finished and it works great. I hope that you found this video to be helpful. To see more space-saving projects like this, you can visit my website at tysonmorebuilds.com or view process pictures and videos on Instagram at tyson underscore more and or subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you're interested in what tooling I was using during the project, then check out my longer video on the Tools Today YouTube page. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks again for watching.